Thank you very much, Ambassador, for welcoming us to the consulate. I just wanted to ask you, what's the purpose of your trip this time? Uh, so, first of all, thank you for your visit and I always appreciate being able to explain a little bit what the Austrian Embassy to Malta is doing and, of course, uh, what uh, the focus of our activities is like. So, well, um, yesterday we celebrated Austria's National Day with a beautiful reception and um, I've been so happy to co-host this reception together with our honorary Consul General Michael Bianchi and we had invited a wonderful crowd of people starting with the President of the Republic but then also ministers, politicians but we also had um, participants from academia of course from the business sector um, we had quite a number of people from the cultural scene then of course uh, lots of colleagues from other embassies and well of course the Austrians living in Malta because that's um, that's our constituency and um, well they, they always enjoy celebrating uh, Austrian National Day with us and um, it was for me it was a wonderful event you know being able to to meet all those interesting people and uh, to exchange and also in my speech you know that's that's always a good opportunity Mm, to send a few messages and to take a stance. So it was a, a very beautiful occasion. For those people who are watching us mm -hmm. uh, and obviously weren't there yesterday, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what was uh, your message in a nutshell? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, in a nutshell, I would say my message was about the cooperation between Austria and Malta and about the friendship also between our countries. And uh, one really uh, important topic of my speech was of course neutrality. Because Austria and Malta are neutral EU member states and this is a status which creates a very close connection between our two countries. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when it comes to the European Union's um, defense and security policy, Austria and Malta are really close partners. So that's important for us. That's good to hear. How is National Day celebrated in Austria? Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, actually um, uh, Austrian National Day in Austria is a holiday, of course. Um, and then, you know, you have uh, uh, celebrations all over the country. But uh, in Vienna, it's, it's really a very big thing. So um, the presidential chancellery uh, has a day of open doors. Then the federal chancellery has a day of open doors. The ministries are opening their doors to, to the public. So that's also an opportunity you know, for Austrians, but also for tourists to visit those buildings because um, that our federal president his offices are located in the Imperial Castle and you know they are so beautiful um, and of course we as ambassadors we get the opportunity to visit those places which are wonderful yes, but then yes. but then um, National Day is also an opportunity for the, the public to see those places mm -hmm. which are extraordinary so it's first it's, it's the places you can see but also um, at this uh, occasion uh, we present exhibitions in, in the ministries and there are many colleagues present who give information on our activities mm -hmm. so we are really sharing information with, with the public on the day of open doors. This is a, a focus on but then there's also you know there's a huge exhibition of the Austrian armed forces and you know children, boys, of course, yes. they love those, those, yes. those exhibitions, yes. you can imagine. Yes. There's really crowds of people mm -hmm. um, uh, visiting and no, it's, it's really a very big thing. You're mentioning children, it's all about the continuity mm -hmm. of the country's heritage. Mm -hmm. What about the story, the history of uh, National Day of Austria? Yes, um, you know, in 1945, uh, after the end of the Second World War, Austria was occupied um, by Allied forces. So there was um, the US, 
Russia, uh, France and Great Britain. So, you know, Austria is not a very big country, but it was really split in four by, uh, by the occupying uh, forces. And also the capital, Vienna, was split in four. So, and, and all those um, regions had a particular administration, governed, of course, by, by the occupying force. So it was a difficult period for Austria, uh, and it lasted 10 years. So um, then, of course, uh, there were always ne negotiations between the Austrian uh, government and the allied, allied forces occupying Austria. And then finally, um, 1955, they came to an agreement, um, a contract was signed. But then, of course, uh, it took some time until this uh, agreement entered into force. So our national day, that's the day after the agreement entered into force. Um, and then that means that this agreement guaranteed Austria's independence. And Amazing. that's what we celebrate. That's what we celebrate. It's always nice to know the history, I think, yes, of other yeah, countries. It's important. It's you important. mentioned Mr. Michael Bianchi at the yes. beginning of uh, mm -hmm. this interview. Mm -hmm. uh, how long uh, has he been associated with the Austrian consulate? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, <laughs> It's already more than 20 years, so 22 years, that he has been uh, serving as Austrian Honorary Consul General, and we are truly happy about it. Because uh, I know, you know, the embassy is not resident, so I cannot be here all the time, but I know that the Austrians are in very good hands here. Um, we have um, also a collaborator of Mr. Bianchi, who is taking care of the daily affairs, so we are really happy that uh, the, the Austrian concerns here in Malta are in very good hands, also when I'm not here. So, no, this is really working very well. Because, you know, for us it's, it's about uh, having continued access also here to authorities, uh, to exchange information and, yes, to, to discuss matters of, of uh, shared shared interest, of course. And I must yeah, say, I mean, it's well. evident that he's uh, very active. He's very active, that's true. And then, you know, it's for us it's a huge advantage that he's so well connected with the Maltese business uh, community because we learn a lot um, via, via his insights. Mm -hmm. So this is, uh, this is a great advantage. And now, you know, um, he has so many contacts which are also helping us. So it's, mm. it's really working in an excellent way. And I'm very grateful, I have to say. <laughs> yes, true. It seems to be a very good partnership. Yes, it is. You obviously want to promote Austria as a destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, for those watching us, mm -hmm. what would be the highlights of a visitor coming for the first time, for example? Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, if you go um, to Austria for the first time, there is so much to be seen, I have to say. Because, um, well, uh, Austria is a federal state. Uh, we have nine federal states. Many visitors first go to Vienna because it's the capital and it used to be the capital of the empire. So we have really lots of amazing architecture. Uh, we have museums of worldwide renown. I mean, they are among the top global museums. It's really worth visiting. But then there's also uh, a very interesting contemporary art scene, uh, which has evolved over um, the last 50 years, I would say. So that's also worth visiting, mm -hmm. of course. And then, you know, Austria is the country of music. So <laughs> you, when, when you go to Vienna first, it, it should be on a, your agenda to attend some concert or the opera or so. So, well, that would be Vienna, but there's a lot more. Uh, you know, there are those those public eateries, the Heurigen, the very traditional ones. 
you should go there as well. You get um, the wine, you know, the young wine, mm -hmm. but very good and you get good food. So, and yeah, it's, it's just a nice place and a very relaxed place, you know. At the Heuring, um, everybody goes there. You, you get, you know, ministers and, and you get, uh, yeah, ordinary people. So everybody goes there and everybody mingles there. It's, it's really, it's very nice there. So that's Vienna. But a lot more to, the, to it. But then um, in the rest of Austria, there are so many beautiful places. I mean, every federal state has its highlights, I have to say. Uh, me, myself, I'm from Lower Austria. And there's one region, it's also UNESCO World Cultural Heritage, Wachau. Um, that's the valley of the Danube. Uh, and in this valley, you have lots of vineyards. Um, and historically architecture, very good food, very good wine, I have to tell you again. So that's, that's also one of the highlights, but you have a very um, good uh, contemporary arts uh, scene and, and museums there as well. So a lot to be seen there. Then if you uh, look at the other federal states, Salzburg, for instance, I mean, many Maltese already know Salzburg, but it is Worth. Especially before Christmas. Yes, of yes. course, the Christmas market. Mm -hmm. That's that's really charming. Again, good wine, <laughs> but mm -hmm. hot, hot wine, of course. Now the Christmas markets with all those nice souvenirs, but also quality souvenirs. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's uh, handmade souvenirs in many cases. Mm -hmm. Nicely done, so very typical, of course. But then uh, in Salzburg, you also have the lakes. But then there's Tyrol, you know, with the capital of Innsbruck, um, city with a lot of uh, historical architecture and the very high mountains, the really the, the Alps, you know, so impressive landscape. You can do skiing there, of course. Then um, further towards Switzerland, there's Vorarlberg, also with a huge lake, you know. So, I mean, everywhere you go, you will dis dis discover something very beautiful and also very different because in the west of Austria you have the, the Alps mm -hmm. which are I mean thousands of meters high and uh, in the east of Austria it's already uh, the landscape is with the Neusiedler See that's already kind of a steppe mm -hmm. landscape so it's really are already very different. So you, mm -hmm. you've got a lot. You have no access to the sea. Mm -hmm. Well, <laughs> but well, otherwise, otherwise there's... It doesn't a... matter if you're coming from Malta, I think. Well, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah. And I'm sure you would like, you know, the greenery, yeah. the greenery. It um, sounds amazing. Yes, there's so much greenery and uh, I think this is relaxing for the eye. And well, it can be quite hot in Austria. But then, um, yeah, it's, there's more rain, of course, than in Malta. So it's, it's, I, I think it can be quite relaxing. focus on something that, that's, uh, that's very much in the news globally, mm. artificial intelligence. Mm. What is uh, the government's uh, views on regulating artificial mm -hmm. intelligence mm -hmm. and the way forward with it? Um, excellent question. Uh, well, you know, artificial intelligence is gaining more and more importance. I think we are just at the start of developments. And as you mentioned, we have to observe closely because um, artificial intelligence can help a lot and can support our activities, but it must not replace our activities. Mm -hmm. And you are right, we have to be careful, of course, um, to see the developments and then really look into it where there could be risks also. But then, you know, uh, I mean, for instance, if you think about Jet GPT, mm -hmm. um, it can be helpful, but we should not rely too much on it. Mm -hmm. Because it's still... It should be used more as a tool. A tool, exactly. Mm -hmm. It can be a tool, mm -hmm. 
but uh, it's still the human brains which mm. count and mm. that has to it's continue to be It's very difficult to find a balance for AI to reach its potential yes. and yet have a look at the risks that it yes. might bring also. Yes, no, no, but, but we have to watch it closely, but I still think we're just at the start of it and there will be so much more coming, which we don't know yet. Mm -hmm. So um, we are living in very interesting times, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, uh, of course, mm, sometimes there's, there's criticism that uh, children spend so much time on the computers. And yes, true on the one hand, but on the other hand, I'm sure that they acquire capacities mm -hmm. which we do not have yet. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they, they are really the digital natives mm -hmm. and they have competences which are really important. Yes. yes. So and they also develop those competences mm -hmm. in an impressive way. Mm -hmm. What about emerging technology in Austria? Are there any companies that are doing exceptionally well? Um, yes, well, um, Austria, you know, has been uh, a champion in several fields for a long time. So uh, what we focused uh, on already long ago uh, was uh, sustainable energy. And so we, we started already decades ago uh, with quite a number of enterprise companies. And so, you know, as we started that early, we, we are doing quite well with it, mm -hmm. but then so much more needs to be done mm -hmm. and there is so much evolving right mm -hmm. now. If you ask them, the companies, which, which uh, products they will sell in five years, they will tell you that they do not know those projects mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so much, so, such a rapid uh, evolution. It's mm -hmm. impressive, I would say. And uh, yes, that's a, that's a strong point of Austria, certainly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're speaking about evolution. What are your views on fintech and digital banking? Mm -hmm. Well, also here, of course, there are many opportunities, for sure. Um, and however, we need regulation, you mm -hmm. know. Even here, um, the, the risk of abuse is there. Uh, we have seen it. Um, cyber, cyber security is really a, an issue. So we, we have to be very careful. But no, of course, I mean, it can, can be helpful. But again, we have to be careful on it, sure, mm -hmm. and observe it and have regulation on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Going forward with regards uh, to uh, being an ambassador here mm -hmm. to Malta, what do you have planned for the next year? Yes, <laughs> good question, thank you. Well, um, you know, we are currently having lots of exchanges between members of the Austrian government and members of the Maltese government and that's wonderful because that's always a moment where uh, there's an exchange on the very high level and also follow up you yeah. know so um, of course we are now looking forward to a very high rank high level uh, exchange which will take place soon between Austria and Malta so that's excellent. And of course, I look uh, forward to having uh, other um, uh, members of the Austrian government exchanging with members of the Maltese government next year. That has to be on the agenda, uh, of course, and um, in the political uh, field. Then uh, in the economic sphere, um, yesterday at our reception, we have also presented the new Austrian commercial councillor. Well, actually, he's based in Milano, but of course, coming over to Malta and uh, meeting many uh, people from the business scene here. And well, we are exploring possibilities for further cooperation, you know, for further, I don't know, probably uh, Austrian company, uh, companies who might 
probably establish a branch in Malta also. So uh, we will delve into uh, this question of uh, business cooperation and exchange. Certainly that will be very important mm -hmm. next year, of course. Then, you know, when it comes to our consular services, uh, meaning that we provide assistance to Austrians living in Malta or um, Austrian tourists who come to Malta, then of course we will continue those services for sure. We have an Austrian Maltese association here, so of course we will continue uh, those, those activities, of course. And then in the, in the cultural spheres, there's already a number of projects. And well, uh, just uh, one, one project which I would like to mention ahead. Um, at the University of Malta, there's a department for German language. And we are about to establish a, an Austrian library at this department of German. We have already provided about 200 books, a further delivery is on the way, and we are already preparing for the next delivery of, of, of Austrian books. In order so when, when are the books available for, um, for well the, the, the well now the, the books which have already arrived are here for registration mm -hmm. at the university mm -hmm. and then you know registration takes a certain time and then they will be um, there in the library as of February I would mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. so it seems to be something that you've set up I noticed speaking mm -hmm. to you yeah mm -hmm. watching you yesterday delivering mm -hmm. your speech you're very mm -hmm. passionate about what you do yes I am true but truly love it. It's true, mm. yes. No, no. It's very evident. What mm. motivates you? Um, you know, the love of people. <laughs> I would say the love of people. That's, that's what motivates me. And my profession gives me the opportunity to bring people together. Mm. You know, people from Austria and people from Malta, to bring them together uh, and to have them exchange and to have them cooperate. And I find it so motivating. And there are so beautiful outcomes, you know, because when people get to know each other, they understand each other, they uh, acknowledge each other's uh, talents, they work together, they even complement in a way their, their, their mm -hmm. activities. Mm -hmm. So that's so beautiful, mm -hmm. you know. How does, does it work well for you being here some of the time mm -hmm. and traveling to and from mm -hmm. Austria, mm -hmm. it does? Yes, it does work well for me, I have to say. Um, actually, I call it best of two worlds. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I do, I do, because... I think you have to work hard at you, in a way. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do, that's also true. But okay, it's worth it, it's worth it. It's a lot of work, but it's worth it. No, no and I truly enjoy it. And then, you know, I can see those really wonderful results of my work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, that motivates you to do more. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, it is, it is really a pleasure, I have to say. Yes. We are very happy uh, to participate in next year's Malta's Arts Biennale. It's the first ever uh, Arts Biennale organized by Malta and we are really honored that we were also chosen to, to have a pavilion at the uh, Arts Biennale. Uh, well, the Austrian pavilion will be located in Fort St. Elmo in a beautiful place. You know, uh, it's, you know, the main square in Fort St. Elmo and next to it there are those vaulted rooms which are a treasure in themselves, I have to say. And um, I'm very happy that there will be a well-known Austrian artist who will participate uh, in the Arts Biennale and he will use those beautiful rooms and establish his installations there. So um, it's an artist who uh, has, is working in different fields. So he will uh, exhibit um, sculptures, of course, and, and uh, mosaics, and so, so, but adapted to the rooms, you know, responding to the rooms also, because they have a strong, those rooms have a strong character. So the um, artworks have to correspond to the place. So the, the artist is Christian Gmeiner, 
very uh, well-renowned Austrian artist who is also a professor at the University of Applied Arts and um, has a variety of artworks. And actually, you know, it's artworks whom, which I like very much myself. <laughs> he's also a painter, and but he's right now, he, you know, he's also establishing his his program for for the pavilion. But we have already uh, sent sent, of course, our um, our project, and then uh, connected to this exhibition is also an Austrian curator, um, an excellent curator. Uh, who has been uh, director of one of uh, Austria's really important art museums, Karl Eigner, who is really an, an expert on, on curating, with whom I've been working together already for some project in Brussels, you know, 20 years ago. So um, it's on a very good way and we're very much looking forward to it. And then, um, you know, it's this, um, this context of the Fort St. Elmo and of course of the topics of the Malta Arts Biennale because it's of course the Mediterranean, uh, this region uh, with this special spirit but also challenges connected to it and the Austrian um, project will respond to that. So I'm really looking forward to having it. Thank you very much for your time, Ambassador, yes. and I really wish you the best of luck. Thank you so Thank much, you. Leah. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Grazie signori, li seguito il Culture News e l'on feita in Aharza lejn il-kultura tal-Austria u t-kellimna ma l-ambaxa t-riġi tal-Austria. Jekant komxi kommenti batu on permets tal-WhatsApp fuq numru li jidar fuq l-screen. Jina leja hog għal netti fissanif u għal waqfa asira.